This is Dr. John Ernstberger, and we'll begin talking today about the present value of an annuity. This video is recorded originally in the spring of 2013. This uh, correlates to section 6.4 with the E chapter for the Core 1140 class. Now, when a person retires, he or she may want to receive a certain amount of money each month, i.e., they want to have a stable income. There may be some other interval time as well. And they may want more than just the interest to um, pay for their lifestyle. Now, we consider just the interest in Lecture 2. But whenever we need to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to see a lump sum invested that not only is the interest used to subsidize lifestyle, but the principal is slowly used. So what that means is each month the amount of principal actually gets reduced as opposed to increasing like what we've seen. Now, when we do this, we have to have a fixed period of time in mind because what we know is that at the end of this window of time, the amount in the bank or the amount in the investment will become zero dollars. So what we need to know early on is the large sum of money needed to uh, receive money in this manner. That's called the present value of an annuity. Now, here's the difference. In lectures one, two, and three, we were putting money into an account each period. In this section, we are taking money out of the account. Well, again, just like in the past, we have, a, we have a solid mathematical foundation for what it is that we're going to do. We're going to look for the present value. We've, we've got payments that are going to be made regularly, but they are payments that are coming out, not payments that are going in. We're going to use, consequently, the PACE function, PV, just like the, the future value function, um, in Excel. So let's go to it. All right, I've got a blank spreadsheet. Let's highlight an example. And this is really just a very natural extension of things that we've already been doing. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit and increase the window to 160%. All right, let me give you a moment just to read this on your own. All right, find the lump sum that one must invest in an annuity in order to receive $1,000 at the end of each month for the next 16 years. The annuity pays 9% compounded monthly. They're going to be paid $1,000 at the end of each month. So that's the compounding frequency. The time on that is 16 years, and the rate is 9%, so 0 0.09. We want to find out the present value. Pretty straightforward. F sub x, present value shows up there near the top. Let's do the work. Well, it's rate divided by compounding frequency. The compounding frequency times the time in years, that's for the number of periods, and the payment. Thousand bucks. Well, again, I need that negative sign there. So what that means is that in order to live this out, I need one hundred and one thousand five hundred and seventy-two dollars and seventy-seven cents. Well, something that's useful to analyze is how much is actually paid out to the person. Well, they're going to pay a thousand dollars a month. Get they're going to receive a thousand dollars a month for twelve months each year for 16 years. They actually get out $192,000, but they only have to have $101,000, um, 572.77, at the beginning of the time period. Now, what is this that we're kind of leading you to? We know that ultimately you want to retire with a certain lifestyle. Well, how much do you need to have in order to, to live this lifestyle comfortably for the next X years? Well, beyond all that, what does that mean? That means how much do I need to have in the bank at the day I retire? Well, if I know that, then I can figure out how much I need to pay in along the way until the day I retire in an ordinary annuity. Pretty neat. Now let's look at a problem from a different vantage point. If our, if our account contains a certain amount of money on the day we retire, how much can I withdraw? Hmm. 
So let's go again. What we're going to look at now is a payment output. So what we've been looking at before in, in, this, in this section is the present value. But now I want to find out how much I can get paid over a certain amount of time if I have a certain dollar amount in the bank. A very neat concept. Let's now continue with example two. Suppose that a couple plans to set up an ordinary annuity with a $100,000 inheritance they received. What's the size of the quarterly payments they will receive for the next six years while their children are in college if the account pays 7% compounded quarterly? So let's take just another second to read through this example. Now they're going to set up this ordinary annuity. The $100,000 is a present value. Okay. And it's asking what's the size of the quarterly payments. We're going to, this is, this is an ordinary annuity. The payments will be the same as the compounding frequency. It's quarterly, so it's four times a year. There are six years to go in this whole process and the rate is 7%. Now as a departure I could just do 7% and Microsoft Excel is pretty smart. So if I want to find the payments they're going to receive also quarterly and come up here and click F sub X. Payments my third option down but if it's not all you have to do in the search is do PMT and hit go and payment makes its way to the top. So I'm looking to define this payment concept. Well, the rate is 7% a year divided by four times. The number of periods is four times per year for six years. And the present value is that negative $100,000. So they receive as a regular payment $5,138.57. How much are they paid total? Well, they get 5138.57 each quarter, so four times a year, for six years. So I do the product of the payment times the number of times the payment occurs annually times the number of year. They get $123,000, 325 out of $100,000. That's a pretty good investment. Let's take a look at our next example. already moved that to uh, the Excel spreadsheet. So let's just go through and figure this out. Give you another second to read it. So as an annual payment they would like to receive $12,000. They've got 25 years in which to get that money out. Um, the rate is 0 0.06%, 6%, 0 0.06 as a decimal. And the compounding frequency is exactly what you'd expect is annually. So it's one time a year. Well, I wanted to know what the lump sum they need to deposit now is. So I'm looking for the present value. So I'm going to insert the present value function here. If you don't have it in there, you can just type PV and hit go shows up at the top, hit OK. And remember as we've been doing it until now, the rate is just the interest rate divided by the compounding period per year. The number of periods is the compounding frequency, one time a year, times the time for 25 years. And I have a payment that's $12,000, but I need for it to be a negative number to get a positive dollar amount so they need to deposit $153,400.27. Now, one neat thing to think about is how much is paid out total. Let's go back for a second. How much is paid to the family in total? Well, each month or each year, they get $12,000, but they do this for 25 years. 
they get $300,000 out of $153,400 worth of investment. That's a pretty good deal. The problem with handling investment for retirement this way is that the couple that plan their retirement has ignored inflation. Um, $12,000 a year may be enough to offset or supplement their Social Security checks in the early years of their retirement, but the question remains, will it be enough in the later years? Now remember, rate of inflation is typically 3% per year. So that means the next year, um, in the second year, they'll need about 3% more just to keep up with inflation. Now, 3% doesn't sound like a lot at first, but over 25 years, that could be a while. Let's investigate what happens. Let's look at example four, um, a, a really neat example. If the couple in the previous example wants to receive $12,000 in the first year of their retirement, but receive annual cost of living adjustments for each year afterward to find the size of their annual payment for the first, second, third, fourth, and 25th years. Well, here's what we're going to do. In year one, I'm going to set up a little table, and this is not necessary. In fact, I, I don't want anyone to do this. I just want to demonstrate how powerful inflation is. In year one, we know that they want $12,000. But in year two, I'm going to set up an equation, so it's this one plus one. In year two, they want a 3% increase over the previous year. So we multiply that by 1.03. Well, so in, in second year, they need 12,360. Let's just go through this for a little bit, this exercise. 19, we need six more rows. Okay, in the third year, they need 12730 80. In the fourth year, they need 13112.70. So by the end of four years, they've all, uh, with an additional three more years, they've already got $1,000 more than they require than they had. But look at the end of 25 years. They need $24,400. They need double the original amount they were starting off with. They will be living in poverty. There's no way they can make these ends meet. Now, what we see is that $12,000 is not enough for all 25 years. So the question is, how do we fix, quote unquote, fix this problem of cost of inflation, cost of living inflation? Now, we do this with a simple change to our, uh, to our payment present value um, formula. And, and if you look, really we've got this relationship which says A equals R times in numerator 1 minus the ratio of 1 plus C to 1 plus R raised to the exponent of time. So T is in T years divided by um, R minus C, which should always be positive, hopefully. Now, the note with this is that all figures must be annual. Compound frequency, payment, contributions. And by using this formula, payments don't begin to one year later. So what that means is the average individual needs to plan one year ahead at the beginning of retirement. They need to have money on hand. So let's go back and revisit example four. And let's go put this in our spreadsheet. And then I'm going to go back and cheat. And let's go get that formula also. And I'm just using the snapshot tool um, built into Microsoft Excel. All right, plan to retire. So they need a payment of $12,000, a rate of 0.06. I'm going to call cost of living increase, COLI, not a really great acronym, but I, I think you get the point, 0.03. Um, the time is 25 years, and compounding frequency is non-existent in this problem, right? I don't need it. So I've got the payment to correspond with R. I've got C and R, and I've got time here. I think we've got everything we need. Now, I'm going to let Microsoft Excel um, 
each individual cell really be the um, I'm going to let them be the parentheses. So I'm going to start with 1 plus C and 1 plus R. So this is equal to 1 plus the cost of living increase. Now I'm trying to tie to 1 plus C here. Here I'm going to do 1 plus the rate. All right. Now I'm going to look at the ratio of the two. This looks like 1 plus C divided by 1 plus R. So I'm just picking the cells that contain 1 plus C and 1 plus R. So now I have gotten through everything in this intercept of parentheses. And now I'm going to be a little lazy and just do to the T. So it's 0.9717 to the 25, which looks like 0.48785. So now I need to figure out the numerator and the denominator. So let's look at the numerator. This looks like 1 minus this quantity. The denominator, and let's make this just a little bigger, is the rate minus the cost of living increase. So I've done 1 plus C, which is this quantity right here in the numerator. I've done 1 plus R, which in the numerator is this quantity in the denominator. I've looked at the ratio, 1 plus C divided by 1 plus R, um, which very literally is just B19 divided by B20. So that's literally 1 plus C divided by 1 plus R, which is this entire quantity. Then I've exponentiated it to the 25 years. My entire numerator is just 1 minus this value, my denominator is just my rate, uh, my interest rate minus my cost of living increase. So finally, my um, amount, my present value looks like my payment times the numerator divided by the denominator. All right, so what we need, and I'm going to format this so it looks like money. We need two hundred and four thousand dollars, eight hundred and sixty-one oh four. Now, if you remember, at the end, if we didn't account for cost of living in example three, it's still one fifty-three four hundred. But now we've accounted with fifty-one thousand dollars for an increase over the cost of living over those years. Pretty neat discussion. Now, if you go through and you look at the homework in the ebook, there are some exercises that are posted in what would correspond to page 446. Um, and the answer is to number 32 is 93668. Good luck with each one of these assignments. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to call me at 706 880 8155 or to email me at jernstberger at lagrange.